good afternoon everybody hope you're all healthy and safe at home so let us continue with our section chapter 2 Hilbert's phases so in our previous lecture we had uh, discussed about a uh, lemma and we had also seen that uh, using Bayes trust theorem how we can um, consider that the polynomials and the trigonometric polynomials are dense in uh, the space L2 of uh, 0 1 and L2 of minus pi pi respectively so in this lecture, we are going to introduce about the Gram-Schmidt's orthogonalization process. Okay, the main concept behind this is this process helps us to transform a linearly independent set into an orthogonal system. So if we are given a linearly independent system, we can convert it into a orthogonal system with the help of Gram-Schmidt's orthogonalization process so we'll just see how we can do it i'm not going to go for the uh, proof of this gram schmidt's orthonormalization process because it's not uh, mentioned uh, in detail in your textbook but you can always uh, refer any other textbook same if you go and go through the textbook of uh, lima a you can see the proof of gram schmidt's orthonormalization process so here what we are going to do is we are going to consider e1 to be x1 by norm x1 where uh, we are given a linearly independent set right given set xi is linearly independent if we are given a linearly independent set now uh, we are going to step by step we are going to form a orthonormal orthogonal set that is what we are going to define e1 to be x1 by norm x1 and we are going to define inductively that is by induction inductively the all other terms that is en is considered to be xn minus yn by norm xn minus yn where now you must be thinking what is yn yn is nothing but summation i equal to 1 to n minus 1 in a product xn ei ei okay i hope this is clear so this was our first term that is e1 is x1 by norm x1 and uh, we will find what will be e2 e2 will be x2 minus y2 by norm x2 minus y2 now where y2 will be nothing but y2 is equal to summation i equal to 1 to what is it 2 minus 1 is 1 so that is just one term that is in a product x n is 2 x2 e1 e1 right let's just see how e2 will be e2 will be x2 minus we had seen that y2 was nothing but in a product x2 e1 e1 whole divided by norm of x2 minus in a product x2 e1 e1 so uh, if you just see that since we are defining it uh, uh, defining inductively by en is equal to xn minus yn by norm of xn minus yn if you take the norm of this expression of this term norm en will be nothing but 1 right so this set that is e1 e2 etc are orthonormal and also they forms and they form an orthogonal system that is with the help of the elements in the linearly independent system which we which we were given we could obtain a orthogonal system which is moreover it is orthonormal also so in this uh, process inductively you can find what will be e3 what is e4 and so on and you can determine whether they are orthogonal or not by just verifying what will be the 
in a product and um, you can uh, I'm just leaving the proof of this Gram Schmidt's orthogonal orthogonalization process uh, to you people you can just uh, try to do the proof uh, I have just given the um, method or I mean just I've just given a brief of the method that is you have to do it by induction these are the expression that we have to consider so next uh, what we'll uh, discuss in this lecture is we are going to discuss about some properties of the sequence which we have obtained by the Gram Schmidt's orthogonalization process so basically there are uh, two properties one which we had one which I had already mentioned that is the sequence EI will be orthonormal it is not only orthogonal we will not only obtain an orthogonal set we will obtain an orthonormal system and moreover uh, the second property is that span of XI I varies from 1 to n is same as span of EI that is the span of the linearly independent system which we were given is same as the span of the orthogonal system which we had obtained by Gram Schmidt's orthogonalization process. So these are the pro two properties that uh, of uh, our Gram Schmidt's orthogonalization uh, that uh, we will uh, discuss uh, right now. We'll just verify how these two properties uh, holds. That is, let's just check the first one. That is, we have to see whether the species or the system given to us is orthonormal or not. That is, the first property was that the set EI is an ortho normal system right so let's just verify it so for that first what we are going to do is we are going to determine for every m greater than n uh, we shall see what is the value of y m e n okay you know what y m is y m is nothing but uh, we had seen it in the previous uh, portion that it was summation i varies from 1 to m minus 1 y n was i to 1 to n minus 1 so here n is replaced by m in a product x m e i e i comma e n right now this is the constant term so by the property of inner product i am taking it out common that is summation i equal to 1 to m minus 1 inner product xm ei into inner product ei en right now what will this value be we know that this set is orthogonal by gram smith's orthonormal orthogonal orthogonalization process we are obtained and orthogonal system so since it is orthogonal in a product e i e n is zero for every value except when i is equal to n here just see the variation is for i so when i becomes n this value becomes one and for all other values of i this value is zero right so that is instead of summation for all values this term is zero so this value will be nothing but x m e n right because when i is equal to n only this term becomes one so from this what we can say we can say that in a product uh, say x m y m minus x m e n equal to zero right so you can keep this in mind y m minus x m en in a product is 0 now let us calculate what will be e m e n we need to show that this is an orthonormal system right so this is i'm just replacing the value of one x one term that is e m e m can be replaced by x m minus y m by norm of x m minus y m comma e n i am taking it as it is so this is nothing but uh, this is a constant term so i can take that out common that will be norm of x m 
minus ym into inner product xm minus ym en so we have seen that in the previous uh, page that this term was zero right so this will be zero when m is greater than n or for all values of when m and n are not equal we are considering that case now also let's see what happens with uh, when m and n are the same right what is en en was nothing but xn minus yn by norm of xn minus yn right so this implies what do we get i had uh, mentioned this before what will be norm en this is norm xn minus yn by norm of xn minus yn so what is this value this is nothing but one so norm en is one now what was the relation between norm and in a product we had norm en is nothing but en en whole raised to one by two and this is equal to one so this implies what do we get in a product en en equal to one right so we can conclude that the set ei we had seen that em in a product em en was zero and in a product en en equal to one right so this implies we can conclude that the set ei is orthonormal that is it is satisfies both the properties of an orthonormal system right now let's move on to the next property of the sequence which we have obtained using gram schmidt's orthonormal expression that is span of set xi is same as span of set ei right now we are going to prove this by method of induction we shall prove this by induction on i right so first of all when i is equal to 1 what happens span of x1 is clearly same as span of x1 by norm x1 right it doesn't matter span of x1 this linear combination of uh, x1 is same as linear combination of x1 by norm x1 so this is span of e1 we are consider e1 to be x1 by we are done e1 to be x1 by norm of x1 so we get span of e1 so when i is equal to 1 this is true so let us suppose that our assumption will be suppose the result holds for the result holds for i is equal to n minus 1 right now we will show that it is true for i equal to n so the result is true for n minus 1 so that means that span of the set xi where i varies from 1 to n minus 1 is same as span of the set ei where i varies from 1 to n minus 1 this is our assumption now let us suppose that yn is an element of this set at a span of xi where i varies from 1 to n minus 1 right so as the set xi is linearly independent we can obtain that xn minus yn is not equal to 0 
okay because yn was an element in span of xi i equal to 1 to n minus 1 that is yn is a linear combination of x1 x2 etc xn minus 1 so xn minus linear combination of x1 x2 etc xn minus 1 is not 0 because why the set is linearly independent if it was 0 what will happen xn is equal to yn right so that is xn is a linear combination of x1 x2 etc which is a contradiction to fact that the set xi is linearly independent so now let us see how we can uh, find the equation that is let us consider span of the set e1 e2 etc en minus 1 into en now this is nothing but span of x1 x2 etc xn minus 1 into en y this was our assumption for i equal to n minus 1 up to n minus 1 span of ei is same as span of xi right now i am going to replace the term of en that is x1 x2 etc xn minus 1 comma this is en was nothing but xn minus yn by norm xn minus yn right okay that is this can be written as span of x1 x2 etc xn minus 1 comma xn minus again yn is a linear combination of x1 x2 etc xn minus 1 right whole divided by norm of xn minus yn so this is nothing but span of so we have x1 x2 etc even we have xn so this is x1 x2 etc xn minus 1 right so this implies we can conclude that span of xi i varies from 1 to n is same as span of ei i varies from 1 to n so this is how we will show the properties of that uh, particular uh, sequence which we had obtained using the orthogonalization process that is that sequence will be orthonormal and also span of xi will be equal to span of ei so uh, with this we'll wind up today's session thank you stay home and stay safe